My name is Arun Raman, um, looking after the management platform for the Keystone. And I'll try to see how much I can share for the next uh, six to seven minutes on that. So as a service is not just about dropping a box and paying, collecting the invoices on a monthly basis, right? It's all about getting the cloud-like experience where um, similar to what you experience in a, say an AWS portal or an Azure portal, where you see uh, not the storage or what the storage behind the scenes or what the disk configurations are. It's all about what the services the vendor is offering, what services you are subscribed to and how you manage the service, right? So it's all about how you can abstract the technology and provide it in a simplified and a consistent way. And as Sunita was talking, uh, most of the customers are not going all the applications to the public cloud, so that they eventually end up with a hybrid cloud kind of situation where it makes sense to have a unified view for all the services that you have both on-prem as well as the cloud. And a robust set of APIs, which uh, needs to be integrated into the customer ecosystem seam seam uh, seamlessly, for example, like the applications like ServiceNow, right? And the other key thing is the reporting. Again, I don't want to know about the storage or about the disk failures, et cetera. All of what I'm worried about is hey, uh, how much I'm paying for the service, right? Who's, uh, who's, uh, con uh, who's contributing to the charge? And how do I manage my capacity or the fo forecast my capacity? And lastly, on the how I manage my subscription. So how do I add more uh, capacity to my existing services? Or uh, if Keystone has introduced a new service, how do I um, uh, subscribe to it, right? So these are the, some of the basic things that we uh, add as a foundation and build the uh, management platform for Keystone Flex subscription, which is called NetApp um, Service Engine, or short we called it as NSC. So it has various reports to show your usage details, both on the capacity and the performance. It has a service catalog where you can order more capacity or even add a new service. And it's a self-service orchestration, right? So gone are the days where you submit a request so to get a volume. Here you can log into the portal, you can uh, create a file share, or you can create a, a disk or an object in a similar way. And NetApp Service Engine takes care of a, what is the right platform and applies all the best practices that we have learned so far in a simple, um, in a simple way of uh, most clicks. And it also has APIs documented, um, Swagger tool available where it can be easily integrated into your ServiceNow kind of applications. It also does the metering, collects all the capacity information that is required for building, processes everything locally, and just sends the information that is required for uh, building to our subscription management platform, which can uh, generate the invoice and send it to the customer on a monthly basis. And lastly, it can also monitor the environment and proactively create tickets so before even uh, we breach any SLAs. Show you a start, um, a short demo. So the idea here is to be uh, continue uh, with the previous session that we had where data is collected at the edge, right? So in this case, uh, we have deployed a small a virtual, a virtualized instance of ONTAP called ONTAP Select, which collects telemetry data and replicates all the data um, every hour to a, to a core for centralized processing. Here, the customer has deployed a Keystone Plus subscription, right? So the idea is, instead of uh, investing a CapEx expenditure, they want to grow as their storage needs are, right? And also get the flexibility of all the latest technologies and all the various kind of storages that they wanted. So the idea here is to collect all the data here, process it, and then once the data is deemed to be cold, uh, send it to a one second send it to a, um, a low cost storage or even to the cloud so they can minimize the total uh, cost okay so in this case for the um, last leg i'm using i've created a cvo instance the cloud volume on tap instance in the aws where i'll be archiving this the same data so this explains the complete journey of the data from edge to the cloud so this is the login interface uh, uh, so uh, NetApp Service Engine supports um, users to log in either using the NetApp SSO or it can be integrated into the customer's AD network. In this case, I'm just using a local user and it is a multi-tenant architecture. Um, it can have multiple tenants. In this case, I have one tenant called Foster and I can, each tenant can have multiple subscriptions as well. So each subscription can uh, map to a different data center or a different city. So uh, in a typical environment, we might have a subscription, uh, have customer subscribe to capacity in multiple terabyte ranges, right? And it can also show the um, details on if you have any add-ons or if you have any other cloud services in one screen, 
Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm not connected to any of the Azure Netter files. Otherwise, we can show what the usages are. And obviously, we can also manage them through the same portal. Again, going back to the scenario here. So uh, we'll go into the file shares and uh, the, the volume that is replicating replicated from my edge device into the core is called the project zero one destination. And it is assigned to a service level of standard because um, it's just a copy of it. I'm not processing the data, just a read only copy. And now uh, let's imagine um, um, I want to pr uh, uh, present this data to a data scientist, right? Where he wants to make some little bit more process. Well, what I can do is I can um, make it as a, um, create a clone of it. Uh, and I can select what all the snapshot copies I have. So in this case, I can prefer to select the latest snapshot copy that was uh, replicated into the core data center. And while creating the, uh, the cl uh, clone, I can give a new name and also a new share path, which gets mounted to the data scientist application or the host. And I can also assign the service level. So um, uh, Sunita was explaining the various service levels that, she, uh, that we can offer. So Extreme is the highest performance. So this is the data that he wants low latency, so we can assign the Extreme. And on the capacity side, uh, it is also intuitive that whenever you're provisioning more, whether you're staying within the committed or whether you're going above the committed or into the burst area, right? Because in some cases, if you're going more than 20%, that is a premium to it. And you can uh, also add any data protection features if you're subscribed to uh, uh, different RPOs. And since it's an uh, NFS export, you can add export policies or a few tags saying, hey, what project it is or who's using it. And later on, you can create reports as a show back to the end customer or the end user how much they are really using. So just of the time, I'll just skip those things. So it's uh, so what happens here is once I click the next button, uh, the NSC issues the APIs to the ONTAP, creates the uh, volume and assigns the uh, service level. So the application can get, uh, in this case, uh, 600 higher, because I provision only uh, 600 uh, gigabyte, 100 gigabytes, right? And at any point of time, I can uh, edit the volume, change any of the properties, increase the volume, and uh, uh, increase the volume if, if I need more storage. Okay, and let's assume um, um, the data scientist has done done his job, right? So maybe after a week, I don't want to have the same data because it's not used enough, uh, used uh, well, doesn't need the high performance, and I don't want to overpay to NetApp, right? So in this case, I can change the service levels to a standard, which gives me only say uh, uh, 128 uh, iOS per terabyte. Uh, but it's still there in the data center. So when I need access to it, it's there, but the, uh, the performance is sort of rest restricted to a, to a lower value. And also the billing is instantaneous from that moment onwards, my billing will reflect the capacity has moved from the extreme to the lowest, uh, lower service level standard. And the last case here is maybe after a month, I want to export this particular data into um, to the cloud. Right, so uh, I can edit the same volume and I have a backup policy here and uh, I can see a uh, backup zone. So these are the zones that are set by my administrator as uh, target uh, target zones. So in this case, uh, this uh, points to me, uh, points to a cloud volume zone tab instance that's running in um, AWS. And I can say, what is the retention period? For this example, I just chose like uh, uh, 16 monthly backups to store. And what it does is once I click the um, OK button or the uh, uh, done button, it creates a, automatically creates a relationship between the cluster that is installed in your data center to the uh, cloud rolling zone tab, initializes the data and tries to replicate the data, right? And once, uh, and once that is done and all the initialization is done, I'll be able to see all the backup copies that are available for me to restore under the simple screen. Again, the simplicity here is I didn't log into a different GUI. I didn't log into my uh, cloud volume zone tab to set up all these relationships. I don't need to know any of the on-tap technologies, right? Everything is taken care of by the NSC. And just as a proof here, I can log into the cloud manager if that's your choice of managing uh, the cloud volume zone tab. I can log into the tool and I can see the volume that was created uh, for this replication. And it, it is another volume inside the cloud volume on tap. I can further create a clone and give it um, use any of the cloud services um, for this data. That's pretty much it for the demo.
so what essentially you saw is uh, keys from flex subscription not only needs to be end to end we can accept the data from your existing um, environment and we can also connect it to an environment um, in which case in which case it is a cloud and build you the hybrid cloud environment right and you don't have to overpay uh, if if you don't need the performance you can simply change the performance from a higher to a lower or even from a lower to a higher instantaneously and at the end of the day you're not managing any of the storage right you're not managing the disk you're not refreshing the hardware you're not upgrading the software you're managing your data so that's the key of it so I just uh, showcased a few of the functionalities, but a NetApp service engine is robust. It has a robust uh, uh, ro role-based access control in terms of who can view the storage, who can manage the storage, or who, some people can just see the reports. Um, creating a share, creating a share, uh, disk, and creating a bucket, right? Everything has the same similar kind of a workflow. And you can apply any data protection policies or any RPOs, a backup, a disaster recovery, or even a synchronous replication uh, to your service. Uh, you can see various reports uh, of your capacity usage trending, what is the uh, latency, uh, the IOPS or the latency, uh, the throughput that you're seeing for each individual volume that you're provisioned. And also you can manage the subscription. So whenever I want a capacity increase um, uh, to Enrico's point earlier, uh, it is an increment of one terabytes. I can start with 100, tomorrow if I need 50, I just type 50 terabytes here and place, a, uh, place an order. And lastly, um, uh, whenever uh, there is something that needs to be done, if you need more reports or if you need a, 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 a submit a support ticket, you need not pick up a phone. Although that is an option, you can still raise the service request from the portal itself and track the service status of those service requests from a single portal. And for the customers who prefer to be operating by themselves that need the orchestration tool, we have integrated um, into the Keystone Flex up into the Active IQ, which is our digital advisor, and see most of the reports on the trending and all the stuff. So if you're on a journey to a digital subscription or a digital transformation, a Keystone Flex subscription can help you by providing a true cloud-like experience where uh, it's a 100% OPEX model, and we completely manage it for you and also give you a self-service portal to give you a true cloud-like experience. 